Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Hemant. Hemant, you have you have much more to share. I think we'll have uh, more time later. Thank you once again. And uh, Dr. Abilash, Abilash, you can take over. And uh, before uh, Vail starts, as you introduce the topic, uh, please give a short history how you entered into this area. Please, Abilash. Hi. Um, thanks for having me here. Um, it's been a fantastic session so far, and I learned a lot. I mean, I was not available for the initial 15 minutes, but um, and it's a great discussion. Um, I'm particularly looking for the next talk because it's it's diagnostic point of care ultrasonography, and uh, diagnostic focus is essentially a part of physical examination now. Um, and uh, yeah, in terms of like how I did, I mean, I just started with kidney ultrasound uh, during my fellowship, and uh, then I realized that you know, whenever you say point of care ultrasonography or ultrasonography by nephrologist, everybody thinks it's it's kidney or just guiding the catheter placement. Uh, we don't place tunnel catheters uh, that much. I mean, unless you are interventional nephrologist, we just place uh, non-tunnel catheters on the floor. Um, so that's what POCUS was restricted to before. Um, but after that, I realized that like kidney ultrasound is not really enough. Everybody has a favorite story of um, hydronephrosis or something that changed management, but that rarely happens. Like I've been doing ultrasound for at least like maybe five, six years now on a, on a near daily basis. And I have found like one hydronephrosis so far that really changed management because most of these things are taken care of in the ER or or the first line physicians will take care of it rather than uh, consultant changing something. Of course, I uh, use a kidney ultrasound for looking for parenchymal thickness and all those things. So I quickly realized that's not enough. What is really needed is uh, what we uh, face in day-to-day -day practice is the volume status assessment. So it's, it's very difficult to assess volume status in patients coming with hyponatremia or, or heart failure, liver failure, and, and so on. This is actually in, in the dialysis patients where uh, you rely on uh, very conventional methods for um, assessing the dry weight. Uh, but if you're able to perform lung ultrasound and uh, cardiac ultrasound at the bedside as a part of your physical examination, uh, that really enhances uh, patient care. So that's why after after realizing that, I, I attended several courses and finally did, uh, just to give my, myself authenticity, uh, uh, got certified by the National Board of Echocardiography um, in uh, Doppler uh, Echo. So basically that's what it is. And uh, yeah, I just want to emphasize that point of care ultrasonography is clinician performed um, ultrasound at the bedside and it's a component of um, you know, physical examination. So- um, it, sorry. Yeah, so, and if you are anyways, like, taking care of uh, kidney transplant, uh, you would you would rather be the uh, physician that is performing the ultrasound also and uh, making the management decisions right away uh, instead of depending on radiologists. And sometimes radiologists might not really uh, know so much as you know about the patient and what you're really contemplating in terms of uh, further management. So yeah, without further delay and uh, wasting time on introduction, um, yeah, Dr. Aravind, please, uh, take over and I mean, with uh, uh, Dr. Balasubramaniam's kind introduction of you, and I mean, I'm very excited to uh, lis uh, listen to you and uh, learn from you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bala, sir, and Ablash. Bala, sir. Uh, yes, your video is fine. I mean, you are, yeah. I'm happy, sir, because I'm <laughs> Last two times I had a trouble, right? And now I'm very happy, right? Right. Please carry on. Okay. Fine, sir. So, um, first of all, good evening to all the uh, uh, dynamic and elite uh, crowd of nephrology assembly here, and uh, especially Dr. Uh, senior people like Kasi Viswanathan sir and Dr. Mukherjee uh, sir and you, sir. And um, I was I was always looking up to you as my inspiring person. So I learned a lot from you, sir. And uh, thanks for your kind introduction about me. And uh, this topic is really close to my heart apart from my intervention work because the moment I start doing the renal transplant, I thought something must be there to extend my, um, uh, I mean, um, to confirm diagnosis of, of the thing which I'm doing on day-to-day -day basis, which, which will generally put me at ease. And uh, when I go home, I, um, I'm very happy that uh, what I'm doing is right or wrong. So at the end of the talk, I'll be able to fix some of the uh, complexities prevailing in, in, in nephrologist's mind. 
and i'm sure uh, people might uh, start taking this job as a routine work in everyday work so i would call this a biomarkers and um, uh, it's um, I, I as i go through the talk you'll realize why i mentioned this uh, biomarker it's not a double ditch the double, double dutch like it's not a gibberish my talk is not going to be meaningless it's having some meaning in it it's a well elucidated phenomenon and i am going to talk one by one which slides i'll take about there are 120 slides it will take about one hour so okay i'll uh, initially uh, this is the you know a color flow of uh, i grafted uh, kidney and uh, once you see this kind of uh, color doppler flow um, i will be very happy about it the entire um, the kidney is from top from pole to the uh, down pole everything is filling with a proper um, uh, this uh, i mean red and white i mean blue this is a very uh, very pleasing one it's not moving it seems illa you use the arrow in the left down corner remember i told you last oh right okay. fine sir okay okay this is another one and uh, uh, see initially when i started doing ultrasound uh, i could not i mean trace the renal uh, graft artery and the vein but now it has become second nature to me in the moment i put the uh, probe i'll quickly see but for that we need to have some kind of information uh, right whether this anastomosis to the internal iliac or external iliac and other things so vein is always anastomosis to external iliac vein that's not issue but one has to have a a proper uh, notes before doing a um, 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 uh, ultrasound and this is a flow i'm just i'm few slides will be normal about my uh, so this is another uh, graft see this is a very important one so the moment you uh, grafted a kidney that, that this kind of look and a complete uh, uh, the cmd is looking very uh, crystal clear and the entire spectrum with power and uh, color doppler i always use the power doppler initially because it's, it doesn't it is very sensitive and it will catch the entire spectrum even in a no flow air, uh, graft if you put a power doppler you can a flickering of movement can be picked up by power doppler so you have to use both and um, so this is uh, so this is the excellent uh, filling color flow of the entire spectrum of uh, i mean in, entire uh, graft this is another one so recently transplanted this date you can see 55 2021 and this is a, so this is a normal uh, looking spectral flow pattern and uh, time and again i'm going to talk about the spectral flow pattern see this is a small i marked here as a double peak so the so a small systolic peak followed by another systolic peak it's a quite normal one so this is another normal graft here you can see that you know so sometimes you know uh, you can see here the vein see once you trace here you can find out whether if it's internal iliac or external iliac and uh, uh, in artery and this is uh, some basic points about ultrasound the transducer its ultrasound physics is a different subject all together it will take another one hour lecture but we are not going to detail about it but for the just uh, if you have a probe or if you have three probes you know that is a linear probe curve linear and uh, and uh, phase array for echo we use a uh, 4 mhz for the echo and um, a 12 mhz for the linear probe and curve linear we use about 5 to 7 so we use 5 and uh, when once you place the uh, probe uh, near the graft mostly from the approaching from the lateral to the middle aspect of the, the lateral aspect of the graft is scar if you can say the lateral aspect of the scar you once you put a, a probe you have to do a slight uh, four movements so a sliding movement as you see the arrow here rotation micro rotation not a full rotation of micro rotation so you see the screen and do things which will you know you can easily catch the point where you want to know and the smile tilting and rocking movement these are the routine four movements we do and any kind of uh, any ultrasound exam but this is a particularly very important in drug graft so this is a, a power a pulse wave and the continuous wave we are we are concerned about only the pulse wave here continuous we don't use it here in a graft so as you hear it's a pulse wave is once it uh, releases a transmit and listens more and uh, gives more time for listening and con continuous doppler is as it uh, releases the uh, um, continuous transmitting and listening is the simultaneous purpose for the continuous wave and here it's a one point here so um, uh, this I, i just can you follow the mark and so the, this area i just uh, mark here so we always have uh, some interrogation area wherever we find um, like you know interlobular artery interlobular or arcuate artery which are the very interest generally we go with interlobular lobar artery um where you put a, we, we select the interrogation area this uh, this uh, the entire area is called interrogation area 
and we put an interrogation line and that is mark and we have a gate here same thing in between the two line is called equal mark like is a gate and the blue line is the flow of the blood what you see at the interrogation angle I mean line and the, the blood flow that is called insulation angle uh, mostly it should be around the 60 in any Doppler flow but here I'll show you and um, this is a, once you have a perpendicular, you have a no, um, no uh, Doppler angle at all. So there'll, there'll be no signal at all. If you have more than 60 degree angle, then your signal will be poor. But I tell you one point about the RI because we are concerned about the resistive index and pulsatility index in a graph. We don't much see here, I've given three examples. Um, one um, first example is the one uh, here. So here, the thing here is not moving. I'm just uh, oh, sorry for the delay. Okay, here. Um, so the first one is the one you can see the angle. Uh, this angle is uh, uh, plus 60. The another one is a zero angle, and it's a 60 angle. Uh, we don't generally worried about uh, the insulation angle in a renal graft, of, for example, for, for estimating the uh, resistive index and pulsatile index. That's what I've depicted here taking. I took in one example. Today, I've just taken this, uh, I mean, this piece of information today. Just want to highlight the importance of uh, uh, renal, uh, that insulation angle, which is not important in resistive and pulsatile index. You put any angle as zero angle, the, the, so you see the resistive and pulsatile index are same in all angles. This point you have to keep in mind. So here um, uh, we generally were uh, worried about the resistive index. We know that it's a, a peak a systolic velocity and the end diastolic velocity divided by peak systolic velocity. This is called um, resistive index. Once you uh, put a tracer, machine will calculate and give the entire data. And we are concerned about the another data. I mean, in, important point is called pulsatility index. I, I just want to highlight on that point alone. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, added to uh, resistive index. See, we don't much uh, be worried about the pulse rate index, but I tell you, whenever the graph, I mean, getting old more than one or two years, I always look for the pulse rate index. It is a direct marker between connection, but it indicates indirect uh, uh, cardiac, uh, how the cardiac, the, it, it measures the entire cardiac cycle. So it, it, uh, it, 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 it is, a, we call it a triple M, we call it a maximum you. velocity minus the minimum velocity divided by the mean velocity that is called the pulse rate index. I tell you as a corollary point, in a, in, a, in a patient with a very high um, uh, um, diastolic dysfunction patients are going for a CABG graph, they used to uh, do a on, a on table ultrasound on internal memory artery uh, to find out the pulse rate index. They found that if it is more than five, that means the peak systolic minus uh, end diastolic divided by the mean uh, systolic velocity, if it is more than five, the death is imminent and the success of the surgery is not that good. So, so much of importance for that, I mean, pulse rate index. But in, a, in, a, in our arena, in a, in a patient's so three or four years of renal graft, if you, if you come for routine ultrasound examination, not only seeing the renal, I mean, resistive index, I tell you after three or four years, resistive index will not have any idea of longevity of the graft or it will never prognosticate in the graft. So most important after five years of graft placement is your blood pressure control, creatine level, in, uh, graft size, and the CMD man, this is a, a corticomelar differentiation, all these things. If you can, you can measure the entire graph volume, those are more important than resistive index. But pulsatile index have some value in that. If I always look for the patient who's coming after four or three years of renal transplant, I always say resistive index. If it's good, if it's within 7.7, 0 .7, 0 0.8, I'm very happy about it. But simultaneously, I see the pulsatile index also. If it is less than 1.4, I'm too happy about it. And uh, this is what the pulsatile index. Uh, I think you can carry this information along when you do a, a renal Doppler and a thing. So here, um, some of the complication of the transplanted kidney, uh, I think everybody knows it. I'll skip this slide for a paucity of time. And uh, this is a normally we place the graph like this. When we generally, we, people are going for, it's all peripheral preference and surgeon's expertise in this field of anastomosis. I, we in our unit and in my team, always we go for internal iliac whenever possible. External iliac is the commonest one. And uh, we have, uh, this is what the position is all about. You stand before the right side of the patient and put the patient on the couch. And uh, this is, I always have a one small machine attached to the big machine. I always show to the 
attendees and other people and even patient can you know squint and see i mean the can kind of turn the face and see the how the, the images are happening and the sound wave how it is coming this is my routine practice for the last seven years and before that we have small machine i didn't have the big monitor so i just bought a tv and connected to it that's all that's nothing there's no extra thing and uh, so this is um, uh, this is what the thing when you what what do you have to look for in a graft uh, in a in a renal allograft uh, uh, ultrasound the moment you put a, a, a ultrasound a probe linear probe um, little little scar um, sometimes scar may be oblique or sometimes paramedian we usually put a gypsum modified gypsum insertion like a hockey stick you just go little little to the probe i mean scar and the marker, one will be a light marker or the knob will be there, it just will be facing towards the cardinal cranial end. And if the first immediately beneath the uh, below the graph, what you see is a renal artery, then comes a renal external iliac vein. This is what you have to trace from there. Then you, you go along the approximately, you can find out whether it is an external iliac artery or internal iliac artery anastomosis. You have to a little uh, pay attention to this and uh, and uh, if a patient is a little cooperative, so obese abdomen is difficult. It's a very thin abdomen, it's very quick. Within a few seconds, you can catch, especially when patient comes in post-transplant, uncontrolled blood pressure, you're suspecting uh, trans, trans, that is a transplant renal artery stenosis, which is quite uncommon within the modern day. So surgeons are doing quite a good job. So this is what the, I marked here, the external uh, graft vein to the external reactor. I put always the power doctor because power picks up the quality well. And if you are a little confused about the which one is the thing, I'm with this experience, my experience of 10 years, I can quickly find out by just looking at the power, which is vein, which is artery. Or if you have a doubt, I just put a, a, a pulse wave uh, cursor and do, do, I mean, see whether it is a pulsatile or non-pulsatile. But the, the one way, the other way you can do is, you can just put a, a pulse oximeter or a, something which makes a, a pulse volume here and is audible to your ears. As the pulse comes, the, the audibility and the visual cue you can have, two kind of correlation that, and uh, once the pulse comes, the sound comes that the pulse wave will go up that, That's where you can find it because uh, you go, uh, put only the color Doppler, aliasing effect will be there, some kind of you know, turbulence. So you first look with um, a power Doppler, then go with the color Doppler. This is the uh, basic idea of um, the same thing. Here I have seen, I have shown you here, um, the graft, the second transplant, the top upper corner, the top upper corner is the one, um, here, I just marked here, that is a old graft actually. That patient went underwent um, an AB incompatible transplant. Um, later, uh, he rejected, um, then he, he preferred his, one of the, uh, his knees. And if you gave a, do a donation and uh, uh, this is external yet, whichever, the, whenever we go for next to transplant, second transplant, we prefer external yet, that's our choice. And uh, uh, we know that even though previous one was external, we always prefer the second one, the external, even though there is a good internal yet artery for the fear of a gluteal ischemia and other things. And so this is the first graph. You, I, I just want you to pay attention here in the first graph, it is a small a contracted. I'll tell you why this is important because last patient, I'm just down the slide, I, I'll show you, I burnt my finger very badly, which is not doing graft nephrectomy and went for a transplant. I had a hyperic rejection though flow and the CDs was negative. Just look at this graft top upper corner and uh, just keep it in mind and when I go down this and my slide talk and you, I'll, I, made a, I may allude to this uh, slide, I mean the top left upper corner, uh, that graph look, there's a, a contracted, um, rejected graph. Down you come, you can see the graph artery and graph vein clearly. Uh, so this is what our, um, uh, this thing, see what the per mark is the artery. Please remember, uh, if you have a cranial and a caudal end, the cranial end the, is the vein artery, and a, a, a caudal end is a vein. We never place the in internal in, in, in a graft artery below the vein. It's never happened because you have to wind around the graft vein and um, if you do anastomosis, you'll end up in trouble. So this is a basic anastomotic principle that the vein, the artery, graft artery, external iliac artery, when you, when you, uh, I mean, you anastomose the graft artery to the external iliac artery, it should be a little above the, that is upper edge of the graft vein. This is the, basic thing. So you can even ultrasound also, you can clearly identify and um, you will make a note of it. Bala sir, I'm audible and clear, na, sir? Hello? Yes, yes audible, yes, sir, audible, 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 audible. Okay, fine, yes, sir. Yes, because, uh, okay, this is what, uh, this is a moment, uh, uh, if, when you put a probe, I've taken a, one uh, view from, uh, for snapshot from the medial view. This is the caudal and cranial end. I just lifted with uh, 
uh, one um, rubber red rubber loop or the vein and the artery the artery the external iliac artery is a little above and the vein is a little down and uh, so when you see them through the probe uh, the, the external iliac artery will be visible first and the down you will be seeing the external iliac vein so here you see the anastomosis uh, the tibia and caudal line here i am not shown the external iliac artery because they pushed down uh, so the what you see is the external iliac vein and down is the ureter and um, this is a ureter you, you hear the ureter and this is the external iliac vein and this is the internal iliac artery and uh, sorry i just made a wrong thing this is the internal iliac artery so uh, so okay now we don't want it okay now some this is a routine anastomosis we do and sometimes you have a double um, arterial graft artery see what I, I initially I was making a mistake not making a mention about my uh, surgical uh, details on pay note because now I have a different set of um, thing I put it moment I finish my transplant I draw a diagram I put it in the patient file in the so that I can refer later if some some problem comes so this is a very vital point uh, relying on your you know putting only notes on the patient because your file go to medical record room and you cannot trace it later so this is the best way of because in everyday clinical practice we cannot go and trace from the records which is available in the medical record room so we we should have and one copy i place it in the patient as the patient comes that copy will come in front of the page then the it will be somewhere indented in the somewhere in the middle of the page so this is a very important information right so when you have it whether two anastomoses three anastomoses where it is anastomosis this details very simple simple diagram and it will give a lot of information we will go this is external iliac and uh, this is a double we had a, one patient called vein was a double which is kind of a common stem which is anastomosis to the see you can down you can see the double two limbs are anastomosis to the external iliac vein so these kind of details until otherwise you have a note on they have a memory because all my patients i I'm, I'm inside the theater. I know I'm part of the surgical work. So I know where it is. But if you do, a, if you even sonologists cannot find it, one day they may report it's a one is a vein and a artery sometimes because alias in effect will be there. So this, this uh, minute points to be mentioned and documented properly. And um, as a learner, as a any beginner, I recommend uh, please follow this, uh, this simple um, uh, uh, documentation. Uh, this will go a long way in your you know, career and help you you know, managing patients well and the diagnostic ability will go up in many fold, right? So this is um, upper pole artery. Uh, one is anastomosis of the internal iliac and upper pole artery. The minimum um, upper pole, we, I always um, discard if it's a diameter of less than one, one millimeter. I, we, I insist on my surgeons to, uh, um, you know, take the uh, intact artery and uh, um, even however small, and on table, bigger anastomosis will be done first. I mean, bigger artery will be anastomosis, but I'll, let, I'll, I'll see whether the puppet is good throughout the graft. If it is less than one millimeter or, or borderline one millimeter, I will not go with uh, anastomosing that, that particular, especially upper pole. Lower pole, I'm very careful about it. Upper pole Rail, is sacrificial. Rail, uh, sorry to interrupt. Huh? If you can uh, concentrate on the sonological thing quicker no yes sir yes i understand sir now just all very important okay i'll i'll keep you on very graph i'm sorry sir so this is a important point in making a diagnosis but anyway but i like i understand that you are you are pressing yeah yeah nothing is no problem sir so this is a collection routinely we see in a in a in a in a graft moment you you know discharge the patients we always look for whether the document whether collection is upper pole collection we don't worry about it so this is the collection around the hilum which is submitted if it is it is separate it is a blood it is very clear mostly it is a simple seroma in the long run it is lymphocell lymphocell and it, I, we, we have not seen lymphocell last one decade because of uh, you know improvement in our technique and other things so if it is anything see around the hilum please make a note about it because this will cause a venous compression can go for a few but it is all it is all it's all very important for one of the initial six months after six months, the brain vein get kill coated by the thick vascular wall, vessel wall, and you know, any compression will not cause any trouble. So zero to six months is a problem. So this is a collection everywhere. So you have a collection upper pole, hilum, and uh, we generally take a one stitch of the internal and oblique and external oblique and one uh, with a prolin. Some center they do with the one layer and second layer, third layer will come with the skin. So we, if you have taken one layer just above the graft and uh, there is a, another layer is the external oblique, and the third one is a scarpa and um, the scampa, there's a, a subcutaneous fascia and other is a, another one is a, a skin. But uh, if you if the collection is an upper pole, and if you see around the graft, it can be between uh, you know just beneath the first layer, or if, if you are taking the two layers simultaneously, it will be beneath the 
scapa and and, and scamper layer that so this is the collection goes anywhere i'll, I'll show the one other example this is a this is a post biopsy problem always happens when you do a biopsy in the subcapsular collection may cause page kidney so this is the collection i'll go very quickly into it this is the upper pole collection so this kind of collections you know generally we take the drain tube much earlier and uh, this happens and when the patient complains later after 15 10 days we have huge collection you can put a needle and drain it so this is a collection near the uh, hilum it's a very uh, echo lucent very uh, so i'm not worried about it it's a very small collection it doesn't interfere it's not vascular sometimes the echo lucent might be uh, aneurysm also but if you some it's not this kind of aneurysm or maybe you have to rule out if it's a smaller one you have to rule out all those things and uh, this is um, another uh, collection small upper pole collection we are not worried about it this is a hilar uh, this is a high near the hilum just you can see the vein is abutting on the uh, that's collection so it is a very small one septate one mostly it's a blood which has got lysed and so we are not worried about the flow is good kidney flow is good the another upper pole collection so this is a lady we sent with that kind of collection she reached home the second transplant she got a, got up from the bed and went to the bathroom said something's coming from the wound i said let it happen so when instead of me doing it i know you got it on your own it's find its way in, way out through the stitch and it in the entire it's a thing it's not blood it's only serum so this kind of patient took a photograph and sent you know out of panic and they sent the photograph and video to me i said it's nothing so this is the one i want to point out whenever you before transplant double vessel triple vessel here the surgeons are making a, so some kind of a short note about it this is the one main one or three two main main. so this kind of things are very important i know I this graft well perfused graft graft vein to external iliac vein graft artery to with two branches can you see here the branching this is one branch this is one branch early branching to the internal ilia you can see the accessory renal to the inferior epigastric so inferior epigastric anastomosis we have to be you know when whenever you do a renal doppler and the thing color flow you have to see the inter uh, very difficult actually to visualize but once you experience you can even um, i think another it's this is the crux of my talk and um, the, the but any of the introduction was necessary to you know to have a completeness of my talk this is the parenchyma we are worried about i'm not going to talk about the renal artery history of the graft artery stenosis the renal vein thrombosis which is an acute event we are worried about this point this is where nephrologists are very concerned about it this anatomy i'm not going to detail about it so these are the points i i'm really interested in uh, resistive index pulsatility index end diastolic volume and uh, good cmd um this is a very important actually if I, one of my patients and three by three months lost cmd when a young boy then the moment i thought patient is doing well output is good but patient is going up but cmd is poor this is one of the classical sign of recurrent oxalosis in that patient so I'll, i'll down the slides you will come to know about it then increase size then the measured and the donor prior to transplant so donor kidney size to be mentioned in your transplant documentations and so that the increase in size good maintenance of cmd preservation of good cmd in the long run the kidney volume is maintained even after 10 years these are the very good signs even you, know, you need not go for any biopsy and other things these are the excellent signs that the graft is doing well so these are the things uh, like resistor index a formula i said the pulsar index at 3m like a maximum minimum divided by many mean actually the upper one is a maximum minimum divided by the uh, uh, peak systolic velocity end systolic volume is all machine will give end diastolic velocity should be minimum more than 7 or 8 if it is more than less than if a patient comes after 6 years of with a you know just routine check up is greater than 1.2 it has gone up to 1.7 if i do ultrasound if i see that ed um, uh, pulse tail volume and uh, pulse tail index more than 1.5 and the resistor index are normal and the edv is more than 7 a little wide so this graft might live for another for few years or make it end up in trouble somewhere later so this kind of uh, intuitive intelligence will automatically will come to your mind when you start doing ultrasound uh, every day so these are the signs i'm going to you know uh, so sort of tell few signs i'm going to okay actually uh, this should be the first one and i reverse this some slight change i think sir balasar was telling the other talk and you know he was witnessing all this evidence i mean this signs i mean this uh, 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 spectral flow pattern and uh, he didn't name it okay this is what i name it and um, please bear with me this is the this is what i'm going to tell today uh, all along my talk this is my observation not to happen one or two cases within uh, thousands of cases i did an uh, ultrasound 
I came to a very, uh, I said, validated myself on my findings and I come out with this kind of uh, information. Nandi sign is the very pleasant sign. Uh, Nandi sign is the one you, moment you put a graph, good systolic flow, uh, half of the uh, systolic flow will be covered by the diastolic flow. So kidney is a continuously flowing organ. And the other organ which is equivalent to that kind of flow is even testicular artery, uh, hepatic, uh, hepatic system, and uh, brain. Uh, these are the four systems you can always, this kind of flow. And um, if you see uh, the uh, in iota and other facial arteries and other thing, even SMA, the superior mesentic artery, there'll be high resistance flow. We are not talking about that not today, but just for a sort of completeness sake, just hepatic brain and the testicular flow. I'll tell you, testicular has a similar flow like this. So this is called, another is a half foot sign. This is all good signs actually. I'm going to see one by one. And this is called capstone sign. When the moment the patient comes after 10 years with a creatinine of three or four, and the moment you patient will be doing well, good output, but slowly creatinine is kind of creeping up and uh, hemoglobin is going down, proteinuric, and you do a biopsy chronic allergy nephropathy. But how you, so this kind, this sign is a capstone sign. And uh, this is the three signs I want to really stress on the things is a high rejection. One, see this and all, if you look at your, the ultrasound, this will exactly will be similar like uh, this kind of uh, the picture I'm showing. This is all named by me, you're not seeing anywhere. Uh, uh, at the end of the talk, you like to uh, memorize and I mean, keep in your mind, do things. I'm very happy about it. But this is what my uh, understanding and, uh, and uh, uh, I just don't you know, take it as you know, if your mind accepts it. So this is what the, the thorn and tree appearance, see, like in you know, a first appearance, the second one is a butch al Arab sign. It's like, you know, there's a building, you know, United Emirates, uh, UAE. And uh, another is the, um, uh, Dublin spire, that's a uh, 231 height uh, spire is the uh, science, a long, tall, with a tapering end is called in Dublin's uh, the Republic of Ireland. So this is one of the three signs I'm going to talk about in the rejection. So, so this sound will make a lot of sense. And uh, so Nandi sign is the Sanskrit word for Nandi is a small a meaning of happiness, joy, satisfaction. So it is a, it's a good thing. If Nandi is sign, you see it indicates normal function. So whenever I moment, I see the thing, I'm very happy about it. I tell the patients doing well and all this kind of thing. Even small amount of changes in that, when I change the medication from, you know, so lower in the medication from, from CNI to MTAR or make you know, twice a daily to once daily therapy. So all these things, when I cut down the therapy, even though levels are you know, satisfactory and out of financial constraints, if I want to reduce that, always see, take into account these kind of things into, you know, you know adjusting my level, I mean, drug, because out of, Maintaining the graft up in the long run is a real, really difficult thing. It's not a one day business. So here is the one, the Nandi sign. Uh, you typically, you see, just to try to you know, put it, uh, your, the image on that, this is called Nandi sign. So the sound is very important. You have a systolic diastolic flow, systolic diastolic flow. So, so the next three acute rejection signs are there. Uh, thorn and bark appearance, like, you know, a bark, uh, thorn and a bark tree, like a tree appearance. So here, the, uh, this is a very highly resistant uh, graft. It happens only in a rejection. So moment you, uh, the patient drops sudden drop in output, the moment you are called in and you put a, a ultrasound, you see this kind of things, uh, we are dealing with a very serious problem. Um, if it is a poor patient or no output, I, I do a biopsy and then I'll not do, I'll make a lot of algorithm regarding this sort of things to be done. And finally I'll accept and go because over the a year of experience, I spent a lot of money on, in a salvage in the graft, I ended up in now uh, only losing the money, not salvage in the graft. So I look at this science and uh, I tell the patient, this is what I'm dealing with. Uh, so if your money is saved, we can at least uh, we go for a renal replacement therapy and next transplant. So this is another sign. So this is uh, the same sign, thorn and prick appearance. <laughs> So the sound, the sound which is making is a very monophasic sound. So the monophasic sound, this is what happened in one patient. Uh, we, we did, patient could afford for a plasma phrases and other things. It happened on third day. Second day, third day, we have to remove the graft. This is what happens actually, the hyperacute reject, accelerated rejection. So, so the ultrasound finding gives a very clear picture. I was, I was very confident before removing the graft. I was telling the patient, this is not going to be solid. I didn't, I stopped with one plus and ferris and IBH and other things, you know. So another typical rejection sign is a butch al Arab sign. That is the most worse sign. This is a less uh, severity. So this is what you see in um, a patient, you know, worked seven days, 10 days, husband donated to the wife, 
patient went home, suddenly there is a drop in output, like a lot of cytokine release phenomenon, patient was uh, anorectic, uh, this, uh, uh, ileus abdomen, she had loss of appetite, kind of central sleep pattern, typical rejection signs alone comes into GAT problem, right? So this, pa this patient came and uh, I started, you know, this is another patient with the same Burj Al Arab sign and uh, I need to salvage it because I could not do anything. Patient, patient ultimately after months of uh, spending time and energy money and we, we just had to put them on dialysis back. So other than this uh, doubling a spire uh, sign, this is a uh, this is large spike sign, which is a, the broader the wave, little I'm happy about it. Very sharp the base, that means I'm dealing with a very bad kidney. It's a doubling spire uh, sign. Uh, this is the 14th uh, for POD, polyguriate anuria. Uh, initial point is good output discharge. Uh, the patient was in anuric state. I was uh, did a biopsy. I did a biopsy. It was suggested only ATN and uh, myelin suggests uh, intermediate. Uh, I mean, uh, suspicious of acute tubular T cell mediated rejection. I pulsed him. And uh, that time on the discharge was, I mean, fifth day was 2.7. 14 to 7 point, it already received two HD because the patient was aneuric. So this was the thing, uh, echo, I mean, uh, Doppler spectral flow I got. Um, I was a little worried of then before um, uh, doing a second biopsy to confirm it's antibody mediated rejection, CD4, C. I think I, I started loss of I did a biopsy. In the, so this is what happened. I, I did patient. I did very aggressive management for him because it happened after seven days, not within seven days. This is my category way of categorizing things. You know, seven days very very serious problem. After seven days, well, maybe uh, predominant element of cellular element uh, the rejection than the vascular element or uh, humoral mediated. So I did a very aggressive work for on him. So this is a spectral flow and, and color doppler flow. I didn't get much, but spectral flow gave some kind of you know some kind of a sense of security that I'm dealing right thing. So. Sound is not bad. I always listen to the sound. Sound makes sense in life, uh, in a, especially in doctor. This is what the biopsy report. Initially, this act. This is a second biopsy active anti med rejection, like good three cell med rejection. That was the report came. So this is all detail about it. Two biopsies, and uh, this is it happened afterwards. While the course of action, this was the flow, and uh, after that, you no know, patients started making good urine output. That is seven days after the anuria. So this is what the, the resumption of. Uh, a good uh, spectral flow, um, I mean, uh, cult flow, and the spectral flow pattern prism to you know from uh, Dublin spire sign to Nandi sign. So I was happy about it. But the one worrying point in this patient still persisting. Second bias was showing glomerulitis, a lot of mononuclear cell infiltration. So I heard somewhere that mononuclear cell infiltration uh, it's uh, predating the onset of chronic antibody mediated rejection. I'm really worried. I'm mean, keeping very. I put him on four drugs like you know MTAR, CNI, MMF, and other uh, low dose steroid. So patient is doing well, absolutely fine, 2.2 creatine. Still, I'm worried. I'd want to do a, one more biopsy. DSA is negative for this patient. So narrow doubling sign, portents of very poor prognosis. And so this is a patient of a, a patient, a very young fellow, young boy. He had a severe cardiomyopathy, but the LDS left, left atrial size was normal. So I went to, surgery was uneventful. Went home, this is a COVID peak time last year. Somehow there is a lot of a problem in the family. He stopped taking medicine, went into mother kidney. Uh, so he came uh, five days later with acute uh, uh, craft dysfunction, high grade fever, altered sensorium. So I did my maximum level, but I don't know. The, I just showed the one of the things. So this is, you get a double spike. Uh, this is what uh, so some reports uh, in the thing. Why is double spike? So once you look at the graft Doppler, a spectral flow, you can identify what the heart is doing. This fellow has got a, severe LV dilatation. So heart is making some kind of you know, dancing movement. So one spike is bigger, another spike is small. So maybe having some kind of subtle conduction block. So I'll, I'll come to later one very classic example of such. Thing. So cardiomyopathy patient, you may get it. Otherwise, patient with the AF, it will control the AF with the controlled ventricular rate also, you can get a double systolic spikes like this. But what the what the point I want to make here is the, the pattern of a, a doubling spine a spire uh, appearance. So this is what uh, he had a very severe uh, TR, and uh, this is a graft. It's just in front of my eyes. It was hospitalized every day, going in, and a narrow spike, very small, um, you know, spectral flow. You can, I mean, the color flow. You can see. See the sound only for simple monophasic sound. So this three months later, and uh, he, uh, I had to put him on uh, CAPD as a young boy. So this is another point. So I just, the question comes whether to be nephrectomy, we have to go for nephrectomy. I, I, I have some notion, but any panelist or I mean, people attendant participant can raise the questions about this, my concept. 
generally if the patient is having devoid of any blood supply there is no plan for next uh, transrenal replant transplant i leave the graft the why i call it as auto mummification because there is no flow inside no flow outside then disconnected from the entire systemic circulation so it is not going to any harm as expected this graft didn't do anything if patient record well you see on a color gray scale this graft looks entirely normal if you put a, this graft to somebody else who not knowing about this patient they will say oh this is a normal graft but this is what looks in a in a complete blood supply cut off this is a point patient you may discharge the patient on fifth day or seventh day patient come back to anuria if you see this kind of graft with no looking nothing sinister this is looking very normal then you you are very suspicious about graft arthrosis there will be no flow about it so this is see there is no flickering of flow at all but down here i can see the entire uh, external iliac artery and renal vein and external iliac vein is normal there is some kind of assessment uh, uh, fluid is there acid is fluid so here you can see the heart how poorly is functioning so it's a uh, this is a left ventricle is totally enlarged uh, severely dilated and one one fortunate thing is your right ventricle though it's a tr is more the right ventricle function is good la size is normal uh, still um, is a little hope there to you know fight on this patient right so la la left atrium left atrium is a hb a1c of the heart if left atrial size is normal if even however the lv dilatation still i go with the transplant because la size decides a surgical outcome anesthesia outcome and post operative storm everything it depends on la size the la size is normal i'm very happy about it happy about it so so this is what and uh, this is another abmr case i'm going quickly and uh, so this is a father uh, uh, first transplant father a uh, chronic rejection he is um, he is having some bladder dysfunction uh, valve bladder he, he was on self intermittent catheter he was in uh, singapore for some time first covid he, he he had some kind of problem he did not procure medicines from here so um, second transplant i think this is what the mistake i made here this patient i would have gone for a, i thought seven years as so a first graft um could have and it could be acting as a um, in a sponge it's absorbent of all the the new things i'm going to do because if i i should have done this patient the first graft to be should have been removed i didn't do it but cdc flow and negative i didn't do single bead uh, dsa not done for this patient considering the cost concerned other because it's a scheme patient so we could not do anything any extra a penny is a, it's a burden on us not enough for the patient so so two issues i have to done address some must must have addressed to this patient one is previous graft must have been removed but i had a notion that you know second graft after 5 7 years will act like a you know sponge it will absorb all the you know circulating antibodies a single bed antigen should have been done we should have got caution me i should have avoided the transplant so this uh, caution i i i'm really um, i don't know but uh, things i want to um, in, get information from bala sir and other people are doing some sir who are doing a lot of transplant about this i always look at the old kidney this is a graft of the old patient actually i was alluding to the one another one the first was a sister another was a husband see any any uh, chronic graft allo allograft nephropathy or you know a uh, chronic allograft um, you know glomerulopathy which we had is the chronic process it is more see once the graft is dying the graft is uniformly dying still there will be maintained the corticomelia difference it's little and you can you can still appreciate the architecture of the entire kidney here you see this kidney is entirely dis disorganized architecture lost this indicates that's my way of hypothesis and things that i have gone wrong so i am retrospectively analyzing the fact that this is angry looking graft so this graft should have been removed and uh, to, to my surprise when i go back retrospectively you know he was complaining some kind of a uh, pain intermittent fever though he was on low dose steroids so this is the mistake i did and uh, I, i hope i will not repeat it again in my life again so graft nectomy any stage i will do here after so it's not moving this is the this is a transplant of that patient we transplanted from his wife and uh, his on table that was the thing and uh, we urine output was not coming we waited waited we took a so this is it's a, it's a it is like and the video was taken under the light so it was looking a little normal but the real picture is this and the kidney was turgid and uh, kidney was turgid and uh, this is another flow so sorry sir <laughs> so uh, this is a second photograph of serially i'm taking the photograph of snapshot of that uh, thing and uh, so this is a thing and uh, our anxiety was growing up growing up and uh, so ultimately this color turned this way so 
so we did a, a ultrasound before this color change i did ultrasound um, i realized that i was dealing with a you know some bad, bad situation so though uh it ultrasound there is some kind of a, a diastolic flow i we closed the kidney we did one plasmapheresis then ultimately we had to remove on a third day to um, <laughs> the one is a thorn and brick appearance and that is a tree appearance and uh, <laughs> So that is been going for another one. So, so this is going again worse. So, so from thorn and bark to butch Arab sign to W inspired sign. So small spike, narrow spike. It's a very poor prognostic. When if I see patients in any flow, this kind of flow on any patient, I will not do anything for that. It's a waste of money. That's what my conclusion is about. So, so another is a very uh, interesting thing is a half foot sign. This is a patient we got transplant through he received a disease donor transplant. Um, he had a problems from the beginning and uh, the simultaneously where the other center they received the kidney also had ATN. So this is a one way of comparing things. And uh, but I was happy that the patient was stable. Hemodynamically he was uh, much much better than uh, as against uh, when you rejecting patient like vascular ejection. So this patient was stable, no ileus. Uh, this is a one kind of. Uh, as uh, so simultaneously, the general condition of the patient gives me idea that this we are dealing with ATM. Maybe uh, so as the day goes by, you know the the, the sign will become the half foot sign will become Nandi sign. So they, that's a very interesting thing actually. Capstone is another one chronic rejection I told you. So, so this is once a moment you put the graph and I always uh, you know you pole to pole will be looking like this. So here is a, another patient, uh, twelve years post transplant, sister donor. Um, kidney, uh, kidney is wobbling between three to many any of the loose tools comes if kidney goes three then come back to 2.4 2.5 but what i'm worried is i'm preparing for the next transplant so this sign is uh, the another two years he may end up in renal replacement therapy so the prognostication also so this is what i said the top upper corner there, there's a rejected kidney on the patient was on back on dialysis you see the graph looks a little bit you know uh, architecture is not lost and uh, the cmd is fair so still it's a rejected kidney so so uh, this is a, a capstone sign. Then the second transplant got 14th of uh, this year, uh, 14th four of uh, 2020. This the flow is has been donated. So we did a complete investigation for this patient. DS everything and it's negative. So so this is a see the flow. Uh, you will see the and uh, sorry, I think only okay. So another is uh, how to how to do a graft monitoring with the Doppler. So this is a patient actually a uh, level was low, but and I'm very uh, happy about the flow pattern and the spectral flow pattern. So creatinine was uh, just closely observing every third day, fourth day creatinine. And okay, let's not chase with the level. Let's happy with the way things are going on. Hemoglobin is going up, BP is getting control, creatinine is normal. So I'm happy about even this level. I'm not chasing the level. So this is the one patient monitoring of with the second year post transplant. And uh, it's not moving. Okay, this is a patient 12 years post transplant. He came with a chest pain. He had to undergo um, CABG. So in, during the, I mean, uh, admission, so he, he was uh, creatinine was two, and after the CABG and the IE injection, I think two point uh, two point four. This is the flow. I'm happy about it. Spectral flow is good. He's on one drug, single stratus once daily. Though he was on two drugs. Sir, can you bear with me for a minute, sir? And uh, you can have a condition. I'll just have one emergency. I'm sitting in the hospital. One emergency, sir, just one. <laughs> uh, Dr. Abhilash. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you can, uh, you know, uh, fill up the gap, you know, give your comments and what. Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, um... So far, I'm actually, I'm I'm also learning all this new science. This is essentially the take-home point is uh, whenever you see uh, high resistive index, it's all these signs essentially indicate that the diastolic flow is low or absent. Uh, but it's, it's just a great personal observation that like how each of these signs correspond to whether it's chronic rejection or uh, ATN with that partial limb sign that's that's all really interesting and uh, probably we can like I mean unless you know something unless you see a, a pattern or able to recognize the pattern you don't you don't pay attention to that that much you just say it's high RI and leave it alone it's not good that that's it but once we know this pattern maybe I'll try to look more carefully in like when I do in the future and see um, if 
these patterns and observations correlate in uh, in my practice. That's uh, really amazing. Um, and also heart rate changes resistive index. That's also, um, I mean, important to note uh, when the heart rate is, uh, when somebody has tachycardia, you have um, incre like decreased time for diastole. That means the diastolic flow will be higher. So resistive index will be lower. And when somebody has bradycardia, uh, there will be increased time for the diastolic flow to subside. So overall, the end diastolic velocity will be lower. So your resistance, um, resistive index will get higher. So that that's also has to be taken into consideration when getting adapted to uh, looking at the patterns. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I thought I saw some uh, similar uh, names you were given in your uh, uh, findings also. Right? Yeah, yeah. In, in nephropocus.com, there is a yeah, section for uh, uh, like, uh, we call it focus pareidolias or uh, yeah, like uh, Pocus Kingdom, I named it because it's all animal signs and plant signs. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So maybe, sir, uh, I'm back, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were, uh, Abhilash was telling, he also has named many of these patterns, you know, in his uh, yes, so maybe in the future, one of the sessions, we'll have him talking to us about his uh, impressions. Okay, we'll go on. I'm sitting in a, uh, uh, my center, sir, when patient got arrested. So I, uh, the sister could not intubate, so I went and intubated with the patient. Yes. So, so this is six year, I mean, 10 years post transplant. And this is another case about uh, two, two and a half years post transplant. It is 2.1. I'm just happy with the way things are going on. And uh, do a, we did a biopsy, some kind of chronicity already. This is, it came from the donor. So I'm. Uh, so this is what the monitoring also. So we should not uh, chase the uh, creatinine, I mean, uh, creatinine or the level. We, we're just happy with the things as, 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 as a present uh, being. Uh, uh, we can we can prognosticate to the patient that uh, this is very close monitoring is required. So ultrasound gives a very good uh, uh, you know guidance. So this is another patient, uh, Vivita. She is a mother donor. Um, she uh, transplant went well. Discharge rate is 1.9. But I could not do anything to, you know, every time it kind of goes ups and downs, but the flow is good and uh, uh, shows a uh, bias, shows uh, activity, cell so media digestion, which even with pulse, everything. So I put her on a, a four drug regimen, right? Or now creatinine is around 2.2. A patient is doing well otherwise. And uh, so a mother is a donor, old age donor. That's the problem, 74 years old donor. That uh, So still with the 2.2 creatinine, I'm happy about it now. So she's on cadaver list. So once the second comes, we'll put it on the cadaver list. So another patient's like, you know, uh, this uh, a CMD graph size. So after 10 years, this patient is a very uh, dynamic person who's running your school here. Uh, wife was a donor at 12, almost 11, 11 years. He's on serolimus and deplosocard. So creatinine is around 1.9, CMD, graph size, graph volume, creatinine, BP control, all things. He's on, not on any BP drugs. No proteinuria, HP is good. These are the signs, so though there is a medullary echogen, it's a little more. And uh, this happens, you know, as the graft gets older, uh, you have a kind of, kind of you know, medullary echogen should be uh, larger than the cortical echogen, I mean, cortical thickness. So these are my observation for any long graft living more than 10 years. So that patient is doing well. The Mahibala in this patient is another patient, mother donor, age, old age donor, 10, 4.8, but still, when I keep on changing from my CNA to MTAR, he said, oh, sir, old drugs, I was happy. So we revert back to the old drugs. So he's suggesting his one medication is happy around the 4 to uh, 4.5 creatinine. Still, the double flow is good. No imminent danger is there. So I'm just, uh, just sticking on to my, my present regimen. So this is another patient, Surya Kumar. He soon after transplant, his creatinine was 1.8. It's a little educated. So I got very upset. I'm upset with um, non normalizing creatinine. I said, Graph looks fantastic and the level is, I mean, your Nandi sign is there. you be joyous about everything. Don't worry about it or all things. Now it came down to 1.1 after adjusting up and down 0.25 milligram of tacrolimus other things. So another patient is uh, Vengdesen. This patient is a uh, post one trans one, one year transplant. Uh, he's on, you know, this is where I'm getting some patient's problem. So patients and even with one milligram the levels are very high, but I'm going even within six month of transplant, I just want to really every apprehensive about reducing the tablet from one milligram twice daily to 0.75 or 0.5 within six months. I mean, because the tacrolimus has got a very erratic uh, form of kinetics, uh, kinetics. So I'm just worried about this. So I rely on Doppler. That's when Nandi sign is there and the patient, I might personally is on only 0.5 milligram BID. Graph looks good. CMD is normal. So I'm happy with the things going on. So EDV is more than 11. See, I've mentioned prop EDV also. It's more than 10, I'm very happy. More than seven is okay. Next one case, a very peculiar case. Uh, 
this is a mother donor fever with dysuria feeling unwell feeling of unwell and after some time was eleven to post up day even his discharge rate was never normalized 2.2 biopsy done it was showing anti active t cell mediated rejection so crane went up to 4.7 after fever is graft looking uh, you know uh, surprisingly normal i did a two biopsy but uh, uh, so the year i just want to i this is my still validating my own data about i mean uh, my observation by initially of uh, creatinine on 25 25th day of my transplant post transplant there is a double spike of systolic spike is one that is a first systolic spike is bigger than the larger than the left adjacent one this is quite normal finding in any doppler renal doppler but you see uh, here i just uh, i routinely do ultrasound i mean echo also for this patient uh, after 2 3 months any graft dysfunction by that time even subtle amount of pleural uh, 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 pericardial effusion i'm just think my tendency uh, will go towards you know tacrimon toxicity i've seen it's my personal observation many patients now uh, not not many quite a few patients uh, if i suspect cat tacrimon toxicity they have a, a subtle line of new onset of uh, pericardial effusion and it is well documented in serolimus in some patient but tacrimus also i let me if it is there it is a complementary finding i'll not totally rely on that so this is he have male effusion but i forgot whether he had in the initial period so i just ignored it but thing is the next slide i'll show you the the, the spike pattern changed the uh, this is the equally one and the second spike become uh, the uh, first systolic spike is smaller than the second systolic spike more but still creatinine is 3.4 is worried is a medical rep um uh, he constantly calls me sir what happens my grad will i live or you know will i go for second all kind of nonsense so no if pretty much your questions will be putting forward i'll be on tender hooks what to do next uh, so it's adding uh, anxiety to my either care so i did a second biopsy second biopsy was showing no glomerulitis but only t cell mediated rejection still active but this time second biopsy shows uh, cna toxicity so probably this kind of findings could be my dd only two for this patients only sir flow is good everything is normal i think when when these kind of things comes and he is on low tac level also. so i kept on increasing the tac tacle must to 4 mg bd with the diltasem and another 5 mg so this pattern just i, I drew a, a diagram here um here yeah, so one is this one is a normal normal variant this kind of i'm trying to validate this uh, spectral waveform only two dds are there one is a fabigera early transplant glomerulopathy or cni toxicity this patient vascularization was there and um, so i changed from you know so entire cni to uh, low dose cyclosporine from tacrimus cyclosporine 25 mg early must full dose now his creatinine is coming down today he called me that you know he 2.7 uh, creatinine done at local lab because pandemic is not come here so this is uh, his uh, biopsy report acute t cell mediated rejection so all these things so now i am not going to detail so so monitoring continues and another few slides please so amalraj one patient is there this is also a patient of received kidney from his dad, um, sister even small dose of uh, cyclotacrimus is level is too high with tremor hands and uh, graft looking normal so i reduced rapidly then uh, i changed the dose i changed to one patient side patient is the uh, 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 wife also same thing with tacrimus level and see from 0.75 mg twice daily so the point i was trying to i'm trying to make is here So you can take as a you know a, a ultrasound finding is a very important tool in assessing and reducing up and down your your tackle tack uh, dose. That's um that was and so this is a transform one one and a half year brother donor tack level uh, consistently between four to five, but its creatinine is one point one and the spectral flow is good. Spectral wave pattern is normal. Kidney is looking normal. Is that I mean I have so no albuminuria, no BP without drugs is normal. So all these things have uh, you know helps me to. You know this level tack level we can accept and go. So monitoring continues. Another 16 year old boy. This is the what I'm just my. This is the boy. Uh, we we did a extensive investigation, even med genetic test. We ruled out everything. But I had a doubt. Whenever a uh, thing, I uh, this is the third case we are having such kind of problem. Though genetic tests are normal, ever. But this patient had a uh, one of my colleague on uh, Rajarajan did the serum. Um, uh, so axolose level is more than 90, 90 or 90. So more than 50. It's a uh, we have to think twice our diagnosis even though a genetic test is normal we did transplanted from uncle so third fourth month he started showing kid creatinine was 1.2 1.4 1.7 so like that and a graft looks almost you no know, cmd totally lost this is my observation all three patient recurrence uh, of axolosis but there is a see there is a flow pattern is normal spectral flow pattern is normal t 
typically involves interstitium and tubules and the vessels are not involved. That's what that the rejection process is not there. That's what the point uh, I want to make here. So this patient makes a good urine output. Next, we have placed them on a cadaver transplant for both the kidney and liver transplant. So it's not moving, sir. Ah, okay. This is another patient. Uh, so this is uh, Sarala. Okay. This is a ABO incompatible patient. We ABO normal straight cases we have so much of trouble when a abo patient having such a problem with creating non-normalizing so definitely it is adding i know uh, we'll be at wits end what to do next so this is where the doppler comes i'm very confident this flow is good and i even i did not do any uh, titer also and no further test the patient became all right because the doppler gave me a very good uh, sense of uh, security and the uterine bladder so a few more slides sir please bear with me sir oh, i'm sorry yeah. Okay. This is a sign. I made a, uh, this is a sign. This is a typical a single sign is a sign which we see in abdomen, ultrasound abdomen, like, you know, the uh, common trunk divides into hepatic and celiac branches called Siegel sign, Siegel mitral wall, so many areas. This is, but we use it here for one purpose, it's called you know, myel dilatation. So many times, sonologists may have a subjective variation. So dilatation, you'll, you'll be confused where, what is the re reason for dilatation? Immediately after the renal transplant, even rejection also can pattern, I mean, the dilatation also can be a part of, part and parcel of rejection. Even isolated ureter rejection is not documented, but it's a part and parcel of your, uh, you know, graft rejection. But this, this patient, a long, a very uh, one and a half years patient, just incidentally came, and uh, just I just for purpose of you know taking for talk, I just taken one example of this is a single sign, very minimal dilatation. Another is a maple leaf sign. It's a it's a sign that looks well. Uh, uh, this is. Uh, as this is as where it comes out. It looks like you know the graph uh, dilation is there, but uh, RI uh, resistive interpulse, everything is normal. Spectral flow is good, and your color doppler pole to pole, the uh, color flow is good, and there is no cupping of the infant blood and uh, this thing. So uh, in, in between, there is you can see uh, there is a one area of remnant areas the area. So uh, kidney is the some kind of uh, that areas. Uh, if it is really obstruction, you will get a ballooned out uh, uh, pelvic alveolar system. So that points. So this is an innocent problem. When the creatinine is normal, the patient is doing well, so we can leave it as such. Or, or else, if a patient is having valve bladder or a diabetic nephropathy patients in the long, we have to rule out a bladder dysfunction like cystopathy or any back reflex, something like that. So if patient comes with the recurrent UTI and other things. So otherwise, this patient, the mephalic sign is not a very bad sign. So you see the Doppler sound is normal. The other is a cobra head sign. Only third or three or five, five head cobras could be seen in India. So this is what the cobra sign I call it. So this is a bad sign, as venomous it is, and it's uh, this finding is also very venomous actually. Um, so this is what the thing, and uh, this this next few slides I'm going to uh, talk in depth on uh, uh, June fourth. Uh, this is where I where I did um, I missed where I went. Uh, you know, I one case I was overcautious, one case I was you know I I, I didn't know what is happening. So I, I just you know beating around the bush, not you know uh, focusing on main four thing. So that and all is going to dis be discussed on uh, June sixth. Okay, I, mean, I have four patient confluence of four cases presenting in a different manner of ureteric obstruction. This is a one. You can see the typical cobra cobra head, but the finding uh, with this the spectral flow you see normal. So this is what when there is a graft for this function, you have a cobra head sign, double flow is good, you have to roll out ureteric obstruction. So, so this is what see. But looking at the tracing the ureter, you can guide uh, the surgeon that where exactly the, uh, the ureteric obstruction is there so that you have to go intraperitoneal because the extraperitoneal approach or um, manipulating the uh, grafting, a uh, graft after a renal transplant is a big, big problem. It's not a, a easier said than done. It's a very, very tough uh, thing. I'm personally involved in it. And uh, so uh, we can tell the surgeon if it's near to the bladder, okay, extra bladder approach may be best. But if it is uh, close to the um, I know, pelvis or mid ureter, you have to go intraperitoneal so you can make a connection to the native ureter. Before that, native ureter anatomy should be delineated properly. We had one patient, we went confidently inside, but native ureter was atritic. We had a, another problem. So this is a 35 years old male, HCV positive, is a sustained viral response. 
under the um, under some the sustainable bond respond discharge at 1.0 one month of later can start rising from 1 to 3.1 over 19 days so he is having different distant related he was running from post to pillar to get a permission uh, ethical committee permission then at most waited a one month one year then again transplanted adding was to i mean so this is another you know burden to our uh, 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 patients um, uh, um, agony so it is a it is a cobra typical cobra head appearance but still the flow is good so here um, the patient name is vinoth and uh, so here the flow is good still this patient after pcn and this is a flow and he is making around 4 liters in a day and uh, his status come down to this is what is uh, uh, pcn i generally um, i do ultrasound and take up the 18 or um, 21 uh, lp size uh, needle size very difficult to inject the urographin because of the high osmolar uh, molar molality uh, liquid so you cannot inject through the 20 so i took a 20 uh, gauge um, uh, lp needle put into the graft, injected, took a photo, a snapshot of one nephrostogram photo. This is what it looks at. I modified the editing a little bit. So you can see uh, it it's almost goes near to the blood. The middle of the ureter got obstructed. So this is another patient. This is another patient near the urovesical junction. It got obstructed. So thin rim is also created. It's another case. It's not the case. Four different cases. Four different cases, how it presented, how it was diagnosed, how it was made. I mean, how one patient took me to the another way. All these things we'll discuss on June 6th, and uh, that will, my mistake, I think nobody should repeat it uh, in that practice. So this is what uh, the another patient, um, see, so this is, uh, you know, another cobra head appearance. This is a PCN uh, nep nephrostogram and a single, uh, just a needle, needle, 20 ml of a urograph and injected on the graph, took a photograph, and this is what. So it, it one thing here is, uh, the bladder huh? is filling partially. So, so this is what the another patient got. Uh, this patient, this is what the patient I, I got, I took the wrong cue and definitely managed to see, you can see the CAPD catheter also. So I thought that I written off uh, this graft as a you know non-functioning one. I went for another kind of homodotic treatment like you know, renal replacement like CAPD. So the patient is on CAPD. Now we have put a place on CAPD because my understanding about this uh, things, the malady is improved. So I PCN is placed. Now patient is making good. Now the has come to 11 on CAPD. Now two, three after PCN. We are going to do corrective surgery after some time. So another two cases, that's all we are going to finish it. This is a very confusing case. Five years uh, post-transplant, very ballooned out uh, pelvic calcium system to create this 1.1. So this is an undesign is there. So then we did an extensive test. We had a reflex from the bladder. So we we, let, we just on long-term chemoprophylaxis. We just left it. So next case, yet another dilatation, little tricky. So this patient, uh, see here, cobra head appearance, but I could trace till the ureteric end, I mean bladder end. So patient's grade is normal. So I'm just closely watching and, but the surprising find all the ureteric obstruction is patient will be till one day prior to your uh, presentation to your clinic will be normal. Suddenly they'll go for obstruction. I don't know what happens to them. So these kind of things I've seen last a few patients. So stent position moment, the patient is getting, I mean, going home just to put a probe and make a documentation stent is in bladder at the graft. Uh, so that every documentation make a sense of at least for initial six months and in, after that, you can delete all the data because it's not going to help us anyway, except the diagram you are documenting in the initial day of transplant. So this is what the thing, see, you can see the stent here. So here you can see the stent here. So inside the graft. So COVID-19 and the transplant, this is the patient of some, ninth post of the fever, 11th post of got admitted, COVID positive. He had a stroke. This is what the, you know, 2 2021, this was the flow of the graft creatine from 1.9 to 2.7, his kidney heart function is good, very severe LVH, but otherwise so normal, because some patients may get a pericle, uh, huge pericardial efficient post COVID also. So I did I echo, it was normal, this is the flow. So you see, next thing, we had a terrific trouble we had, you know, this patient had a graft artery thrombosis. One fine morning said, overnight sister or staff nurse, I said, there is no urine output. Next day morning I came, I did ultrasound, there is no flow. So graft artery thrombosis, post-COVID stroke, post-COVID uh, throm graft artery thrombosis. Then patient was not willing for any treatment related to come home, he died later. So this was a scenario. So one, one graft, one life. Uh, that's what uh, the uh, rhetoric we always can pass on to our, our younger generation. So we are very careful with one graft. The other survey, heart and kidney, kidney 
So heart have a close association with the kidney. This is the last two slides, sir. The, and this is the patient we got transplanted. got transplanted three years ago when uh, everyone was denying for you know him made him unfit, anesthetic point of view, everything. So he's um, he's working in a Canada Bank government. Sorry, uh, Karur Vaisa Bank manager. He's uh, so he he he's living for three years now. So he developed a post uh, no that uh, new no, onset diabetes of uncontrolled. He had a, uh, recently came with a credit of three point for one point. He was stabilized with one point nine to three point nine. But the point I want to stress here is, down the line, you can see the variation in the Doppler flow. One is high, one is low, one is high. It indicates there is some kind of conduction disturbance in the heart, which is reflected in the kidney. So this kind of information also, you can get it from once a moment you put the graft, even though you don't feel the pulse, you don't see that in a monitoring system. By looking at the graft, you can say something's bad at the heart level. So this is my observation. This is a heart. He has a very trivial MR, no severe MR. So he will do good in his life uh, with this uh, good. He's on only Everolimus 0.5 and uh, uh, Deflus Accorda. There's a mother donor and other medicines for cardiac things are going on. So with this, I complete. Uh, uh, I think some more slides are deleted, sir. And the, uh, the initial, when the initial talk was going on, I cut down to some of the slides, sir. Because I thought uh, the time will not be there to complete. Thank you. Pala, sir? Uh, yes. Ablash? <laughs> It's it's an amazing presentation, really, Dr. Arvind. Um, I mean, you can read textbooks, websites, YouTube videos, and all those things, but nothing substitutes experience. And you can learn from your own experience. You can spend several years or learn from teachers like you who who, sh who are willing to share their experience. I really appreciate that. And I really want to test some of these signs. I mean, I saw these patterns, but I, I mean, I never really, really thought about the names, but I want to see how these clinically correlate. I'm particularly intrigued by the double peak sign, uh, especially with the tacrolimus toxicity. I mean, it looks so similar to, uh, you know, when you, when the person has severe pulmonary hypertension or pulmonary embolism, you see similar yes. pattern in the right ventricular outflow tract. It, it, it's early systolic notching. It's said to be specific for uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension because the C CNIs cause this uh, significant vasoconstriction in the kidney. Maybe that's what is uh, driving to this early systolic uh, notching or this double peak pattern. And maybe we'll be able to see this in uh, contrast induced nephropathy also. I'm, I'm very int uh, interested to uh, make a note of these points and uh, see is, in my practice. Thank my you so much. In, this is my observation few patients actually who had a very high attack level toxicity presentation with you know, like a hyperkalemia, tremor and the confusion, all these things. And I just correlated, I just thought initially, okay, I just ignored it. Then. Then it went, started and seeing again and again, I thought, okay, it's going to be different. It will give some kind of clue to my diagnosis. That's what I, you know, I got into yeah. by this pattern. <laughs> because, yeah, I'm mean, like the initial, the uh, the harmless pattern that you showed, the initial peak, it's very okay. common, especially in the larger arteries, it's common. Uh, yeah, as you common. go into interlobar, you don't see that commonly. But, I mean, the second one is really intriguing. Yep. Thank you. Well, sir, it seems it's too late. I think I took long time, sir. No, yeah, only thing, you know, uh, yeah, it was great. It was great. Uh, we may not have time for much discussion because uh, there will be many questions to be asked. But for the yes, audience sir. and the juniors, uh, please don't get overwhelmed by the, you know, the enormity of uh, the findings and data he showed. So he has so much to share and he has done it in uh, one go. Uh, but we'll, ha we'll have to discuss uh, each by each and uh, Abhilash has noticed. I mean, I also wanted to ask Abhilash about this notching and uh, uh, maybe we'll have to look into it when we see, uh, see our next case when we start doing. So this is the advantage of uh, a nephrologist, uh, you know, doing this. We not only, you know, uh, validate what is known to everybody, we tend to pick up findings like this and sharing it with an audience like this with uh, people who are doing ultrasound like Abhilash and others in the audience, I think uh, we'll be able to uh, validate uh, some of this or many of this over time and come back for discussion. And uh, here, I mean, later I think we can uh, pick up, uh, I mean, one of the sessions we should have, uh, uh, Abhilash has great uh, videos about uh, uh, you know uh, the principles of Doppler and things, and maybe maybe one of the sessions he can teach teachers you know how to do and all that. So we'll plan, and uh, uh, I think we should have one talk and uh, more uh, discussions in the subsequent meetings. I wish uh, participants and the audience put their ideas uh, in the 
uh, inform uh, discussion uh, i mean the whatsapp group or uh, in the website and the suggestions i have asked for i think that way we'll be able to plan this to be of uh, more uh, utility but still uh, i see many people still remaining so any uh, you know uh, questions or participants are remaining sir yes 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 Uh, so they can unmute their mic and uh, shoot their uh, question for uh, some more time i don't know abhilash it's a working day for you there and in the day time i don't know whether you can i i can stay for like 5 10 minutes and uh... okay. yeah anybody who want to ask so them how much uh, these findings correlate uh, histopathologically what are the findings we have uh, in the doppler <laughs> so what is the correlation rate like if there's 100% correlating Oh, the finding or yeah sir very right question this was i actually this was my you know own uh, uh, my assessment uh, um, but um, i tell you um, over the last over 10 uh, before that i was just for a uh, routine examination purpose i was doing but last 10 i'm seriously doing this and and uh, converting into my uh, you know correlation between biopsy and things not on all patients i did a biopsy but few patients but i okay. but it is correlating but not 100% but you have taken to okay, all right. of things into you know consideration in the world when context of you know which which graph you are placing happened to everything matching other things on over and above this will give you some kind okay. of real guidelines you know where in day to day life you know how fast you should act and how delay you can do it or what is the waiting time because in a graft dysfunction graft waiting time is a bad time right you know we may lose the time and it's like but this will give you sense of you know a real a guidance in 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 assessing your uh, uh, regimen uh, treatment uh, aggressiveness so i would say uh, if you start doing realizing but some see if i give you a chocolate you will know if i if my survey test is good but if i ask you to before giving hand again to it's a good i think you may get biased about it but you test uh, you can realize the real and the real advantage of uh, you know doing ultrasound bedside we are, um, but not 100% but i would say 80 to 85% is correlating but i oh, another oh, thing oh, but uh, Uh, when more people start observing this and they you know many biopsies may be available in the future for validating uh, many of these findings yeah that applies to anything i mean in general point of care ultrasonography when we say it's uh, it's physical examination you don't always reach a definitive diagnosis at the end of physical examination it only either narrows your differential or allows you to act act in a timely manner that's what point of care ultrasound does you are not intended to stay at the patient's bedside for 1 hour and do a complete renal artery stenosis study that's not point of care ultrasound so this is what exactly like dr arvin said like it allows you to act rapidly and uh, in a timely manner yeah. any let me check the chat box for a while uh, there are five so can i have a question sir yes yes please Uh, so, so nice presentation doc well arvin sir it was very nice to hear you dr venkatesh here from applause hospital chennai so the question is regarding the use of color doppler sir for a kidney biopsy we do ultrasound get red kidney biopsy is very commonly and uh, once in a while we face this uh, sort of uh, major bleed needing embolization and even an nephrectomy do you think uh, uh, color doppler is a way to say uh, localize an area which is say, devoid of much blood vessels and take a bit i think that is practical uh i don't think so bhaiya because i personally applied out of my curiosity applied and I've just looked for the mapping uh, where the arterial tree and where the see you cannot hit the you cannot pay too attention at one time right only you can pay with your hand and quite brain coordination or you can you cannot see visually and do things because you can concentrate only one uh, area of uh, things so, but i think it's uh, it's a waste of time and energy you when you it's, it happens one one in thousand and by mapping to you know put in a nutshell uh, i think it's not useful mapping is not you know, color mapping is not going to help you avoid um, the post uh, biopsy complications because my my understanding is uh, but, you know when i was getting old i began to understand things well you know wisdom speaks more than my experience i know two at the one time you cannot concentrate on two things uh, like you know taking a visual view as well as uh, putting mind into uh, eye uh, the hand coordination is very difficult because whatever the thing is final moment is very important how depth you are going and uh, if it's avoiding the upper middle pole and this okay but uh, i need not teach you all these things but uh, but the answer is i think it's not useful yeah i think it it will scare you more than uh, help you do a safe biopsy all right but, thank uh, you he said if you can uh, focus on the poles and uh, avoid the mid position and all that may help more yes thank uh, you sir thank you 
yes sir i my request sir uh, the science and all which i took it from my own uh, thing anything modification of science please let me know sir from the participant i can yeah. my, like, because these are the near approximation for nandi sign why i preferred because it's a joy happiness satisfying that's why i took it as a the way sign. i think you have introduced these things to us just now so give us time okay, and uh, like abhilash is also you know he'll be seeing um, many more because uh, so let us see so we'll have more time later and many of these things maybe when, when you go through a transplant like you know the radio pedia a lot of websites are there comprehensive from a to z but uh, then nothing is specific you know to, to guide our practice sir. that's why i thought you know this will be you know a video with file hey, what i what i liked in your talk uh, because i have heard some of this even earlier see we know that managing transplant and adjusting cyclosporin dose and all these things is more an art they would say it is not the level which matters Le- level of calcineurin yes, yes, they don't correlate yes, and uh, minor oscillations in creatinine some experienced uh, teachers and seniors Uh, they will not be explain certain things in words but they will uh, you know slightly titrate the levels or ignore sometimes and patient will be all right now mm-hmm. these observations through doppler and the subtle changes maybe in that that uh, forking in the uh, in the you know uh, in the upstream all this may add to our uh, you know uh, observation and uh, will be able to uh, make us uh, better uh, follow up these patients so this will be an another tool along with uh, blood level serum creatinine edema and things like that so this will happen only when the pathologist uh, do the ultrasound thank you sir sir one question from uh, venkatraman sir sir uh, well sir how did you learn all these things sir i don't know Other, uh, because i think <laughs> is it possible for us also to learn uh, like I'll this i tell you because... i tell you this say i'll tell you thing is uh, we are all penny wise pound foolish you know that's what the thing my, my boss used to tell me right we have to invest first on the good ultrasound machine it's not uh, we are not that much you know we are devoid of uh, uh, money and all we can invest once you have a good ultrasound at your hand you, you things automatically come into place right this is one point second and moment you start doing more and more transplant you are you are in the dark right how what is happening to the patient and every day monitoring by ultrasound is a very vital part of your daily rounds actually so if you if these are the things motivated me and moreover as balasar said one after another every year i set some agenda for learning um, so uh, this, this is what our life we should be a complete uh, thing nephrologists are the one who are the complete physician to the entire uh, in the medical field so i think from top to bottom we should learn and i'll tell you uh, this uh, if you start uh, doing you will start liking it more and it will become aware and you will tend to use it more and more yeah uh, okay. yeah i think uh, uh, there are many people remaining we will continue but we will excuse uh, vilash with his last comments uh, so okay. yes vilash no uh, it's great so basically i i agree with all these things essentially it's it's all about practice and how much time you spend uh you can choose anything there are so many online resources like free open access medical education you don't need to confine to nephrology you can read several things but what ultimately matters is like how much you do you spend time and you do and you will learn your own technique it's ultrasound is nothing but it's like a it's like a torch light in your hand right you as long as you know anatomy and you can search for you know what you are searching for you, you you will find your own thing it's basically my professor used to say in when i was in med school like surgery is nothing but anatomy and common sense that's what i i, I tell in terms of focus also focus is nothing but anatomy and common sense uh, so it's all about practice so yeah thank you very much for having me initially when you called me i thought oh, what what would i do and and attend an interventional nephrology thing but but i i mean i really learned a lot and it's a great experience thank you so much thank thanks everyone thank you thank you thank you, thank you avalash thank you Sir Venki has got some questions on the raised hand. Yeah. Carry on, Venki. Sir, I have asked my questions. I am still in awe of uh, Dr. Vail. That is all. <laughs> <laughs> see, uh, at the end of the day, right now, see, you have to want to really sleep well, and uh, you should know uh, when you close your office, you know, everything is okay. So maybe this helps me a lot. and i was other day i was talking to balas said that you know the handheld machines are going to be available i think it's a very important tool and wherever possible i use ultrasound that is my simple guide and i it i i i taught my young people i mean the, the hemodialysis technician people also they 
just only observation that's all visual assessment is important always just put a before putting a line put a just a, you know our chest which is a visual assessment you know eyeball assessment whether helvi is good or is dilated and all so these things will you will finish within one and a half minutes two minutes time i'll tell you which will put you at ease and your confidence level will go up you can confidently talk to the relatives that these kind of things are existing how bad it is uh, even uh, the bad things also we have to tell them because a lot of this happening in unex ward hours in the late um, early morning so you all these things you can avoid only you know things um, how uh, very clearly from ultrasound and, and, and from the bed side yeah and you can uh, make uh, you know extensions of your uh, thing also so one of my uh, i don't know whether you seen that uh, uh, how i you know from ultrasound to the transplant kidney transplant rejection and all this is in a uh, form of acute interstitial nephritis so uh, what is the role of uh, doppler in acute renal failure so dopplers in native kidneys are generally used for uh, you know uh, assessing the kidney size i mean or uh, i mean uh, renal artery stenosis and uh, things like that but uh, we don't really focus and see what happens in acute renal failure of different etiologies so that is why i got into it and i made some observation but uh, not much work has been done after that i found that in glomerular disease with acute renal failure where the renal failure could be severe but yet the resistive index uh, will not go up much the pattern will look uh, more or less normal whereas in uh, acute tubular interstitial disease atn or uh, ain your uh, resistance will go up this observation i you know made uh, several years ago and I, i presented it in one of the uh, world congress uh, uh, satellite meetings uh, but only thing i never uh, recorded or i mean put up in any uh, journals but i think youngsters can try this so you when you start doing this routinely you extend it to native kidney also in aki when somebody aki means like acute uh, rise in urea creatinine and if you you look for the resistance if the resistance is normal and creatinine is four six probably it is a glomerular disease and you may have to rush with uh, i mean uh, solmedrol and other tests uh, i mean this could add on to your uh, finding uh, clinical uh, judgment well sir i request you to one, do one thing sir we for the people are willing to you know use this uh, inform forum and uh, be a, a participant in learning real we will guide them to you know how to procure a machine and a handheld machine everything from start of basics we can equip them with great knowledge sir i'm ready sir yes glad glad uh, i'm getting uh, you know support from various corners and uh, there was uh, one more or ultrasound probes attached to mobile pad you so yeah that's what uh, arun nargis has asked uh, you are yeah, yeah, i'm i'm, I'm yeah. going to buy one and uh, it's already it's bought and it's uh, held up in uh, you know uh, uh, delhi uh, the, it's a custom cleared and uh, i'm going to get one and it's a uh, it's all in one probe you have a um, uh, uh, three um, megahertz uh, echo uh, curvilinear um, i think eight or nine sir and uh, linear probe uh, seven or eight or curvilinear about the five it's it's sufficient to do all kind of intervention the bedside just using one probe my aim of buying it because i got you know uh, i wanted to do soon after the anastomosis what happens to the graft i just want to put before closing the graft i just want to put over the graft and see <laughs> yeah so such uh, new thinking and findings will never come from uh, radiologists we really can't blame them because they have so many other systems to see plus uh, this clinical interpretation and what in you know, a beyond you know what they see structurally that may not come to their mind so innovations and new findings i think only we will have to give so that we can give only when we start doing so so that was the message i've been trying to give for a long time and i'm glad now uh, vail is uh, around and there are more takers now so let us see i would not have known to many people without you sir and it's, i i must thank you from my heart and you know, that uh, you made this uh, you know widely uh you know me to know to everyone sir actually at, at least based on this point and and uh, a lot of work we are doing inside the door and uh, we we don't have time to you know express ourselves and uh, publicize ourselves that, is, our that is the purpose of this inform meeting see we do have international nephrology forums as in us and avatar here but it's once in a year program many people come give a lot of information we come away but it's not a continuing dialogue so i thought now this uh, uh, lockdown taught us you know how effectively use the web so you know web meetings so this can be a whenever we get time people can attend so we we'll continuously have this program i think this will be more useful than one once in a year uh, fixed programs so 
so uh, let's see whether uh, you know this will go on well for a long time thank you thank you everybody and i was so glad there was at a point uh, there was more than 140 people attending this uh, session and we will put all this uh, videos in the website and uh, to uh, i mean i should mention here please uh, put up with the website the website is being created by me <laughs> so i learned uh, uh, wordpress and elementor during this uh, lockdown and uh, you now that has become a hobby and keep my mind occupied so I am creating the website. So every day I keep changing and uh, one day it might crash also. Then I'll have to go back <laughs> to the IT man, but still. So we'll try to put in as much information there. And I, please, I want people to react and you know, give suggestions how we should take this on. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, that, that June, will be- uh, June 4th is the, June 4th, Friday is the peculiar case series and you are the moderator, sir. Please, I know. We'll, we'll announce it in the forum and I will get that. Right. Thank you, everybody who has attended today and uh, the MQ people who, who made us this uh, uh, the platform for this meeting. Actually, I, I bought one uh, platform for 100 people any long time in uh, Zoom. But I, I realized if the members are going to be more than 100, I'll be in a soup. So then this was very costly to you know, uh, do it by oneself to buy. It costs nearly 5,000 or 10,000 rupees for one meeting. So these MQ people have helped us uh, without any message to give us. I think we I thank them. Thanks. Lord, thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot, sir. That. Thanks a lot, sir, from MQR, entire MQR family. And it's it's our actually pleasure to host, uh, you know, such an elite uh, fraternity. And also, as a part of MQR, we are also learning certain new things. And today's session was really amazing. Let me just tell you this. So thank you, you know, and we would like to engage for such scientific uh, meeting in future as well. So once again, uh, before I finish, please uh, send in uh, suggestions for future meetings in the WhatsApp group and also in the website so that we'll be able to design it better and uh, make it more focused. Thank you. Thank you once again, everybody. Good night. Keep safe. Good night, sir.